This is a story called A Message in a Warming Pan. Come and meet me by the yew tree, the note had said. It didn't say which yew tree or when this meeting was to take place, and I wasn't even sure the message was for me. But the bed warming pan, inside which the note had been discovered, uh, luckily without the aid of hot coals that is customary, was lodged in my bed, so I couldn't see how it was therefore meant for any other recipient. I was staying in one of those large country estates, the type owned by rich country gentlemen in the 1700s, you know, members of parliament or justices of the peace in the old days, with 30 or 40 rooms on three floors. It was now a corporate hotel and conference centre. Much of the historic character had been ironed out and replaced with sterile steel and glass, rather nasty felt-back notice boards all over the shop with hundreds of printed agendas and memos and reminders pin, pin, pinned to them. All the meeting rooms had a pull-down white screen and grey overhead projector. Plastic chairs, thermos coffee stewing on utilitarian trestle tables. Just ghastly and bland. So finding an old-fashioned brass bed warming pan shoved between the memory foam and the standard issue duvet was rather startling, adventurous even. The note itself was rather alluring, handwritten on thick vellum, or at least I took it to be vellum, almost but not quite yellowing card, and faintly ribbed, expensive paper, whatever it was. Oh. And the pen used, not a biro or cheap disposable, but a fountain pen. I even thought for a second it might be the work of a quill, but that would be absurd. The discovery had been purely accidental, and by that I mean I hadn't intended to be back in my room until that evening, and probably not before 9pm. These business things can go on a bit and everyone retires to the bar immediately the sessions are finished and rarely crawl into bed much before one or two in the morning. I had forgotten to charge my phone the night before and I simply nipped up at lunchtime to fetch the charger so that I could plug it into a socket somewhere down in the training room. And as I scrabbled on the floor to unplug the adapter, I banged my head on the varnish handle of what I later learnt to be a bed warming pan, although I initially assumed it to be some form of medieval torture implement. I hadn't time to take a lot of notice of the note just then, but after the meetings were concluded, I slipped away a second time and sat on the bed contemplating this curious request. Come and meet me by the yew tree. No hint of whom had sent it or why, but perhaps I was imagining it or possibly hoping that the rounded handwriting slanted slightly forwards was by a female hand. Mm, a romantic rendezvous by an ancient tree. What would be more desirable on this boring business conference but an escape into an erotic world of carefree abandon? Of course, it could equally have been delivered by the request of the head gardener to a subordinate to bring the chainsaw and assist him lop off a few erroneous branches. I hope not. But why the bedpan? That's what baffled me. I thought the first thing I ought to check out is whether the country house turned conference centre actually had a yew tree. I skipped a, re a reception drinks thing to wander in the garden in the early twilight, twilight uh, in search of a prominent yew or anything that resembled one. A disappointment befriended me as soon as it became apparent that no such thing grew in the immediate garden. However, all was not lost. Adjacent to the property stood an old parish church, accessible via a gate in the perimeter wall, a route no doubt taken by the landowner back in the day. I'm not a great 
tree connoisseur, but I was aware that yews grew in churchyards, something to do with pagan rites before Christianity is what I understood, though I'm not swearing to it. The tall gate was unlocked and I groped into the much darker churchyard, the bright lights of the hotel not penetrating the land of the dead. If there was a yew tree in there, then I couldn't find it, despite almost using up my phone's battery on the torch facility. I returned to the hotel and made for the bar, ordering a beer, but rather than stay there and chat about sales techniques or ogle at Miss Big Knockers or try and hit on Lady Red Lips like so many of the single sales execs were doing, or indeed many of the not-so-single ones, I plonked myself in a bucket seat in the reception area. That damn note was playing on my mind. Someone had gone to the trouble of accessing, accessing my bedroom, obtaining a key somehow, carrying a Victorian bed warming pan up to the room in broad daylight. Hmm. I'd been at the place now for two weeks, uh, for two nights, and bed warming pans was not the normal thing in a hotel like this, not when they have central heating or electric blankets at the flick of a switch. So what was going on? Presumably, someone must have seen the secret messenger. I glanced up at the reception desk. The blonde-haired manager was off the phone and unbothered by clients checking in, so I decided to ask. Surely a member of staff would have spotted someone with a bed warming pan. As I approached the desk, I happened to spot an inkwell and then a feather quill. Uh-oh, too late. She had looked up and made eye contact. Can I help you, Mr Davison? she said. I couldn't help casting my eye further along the counter to a pile of vellum notes. Oh, don't mind all this, she laughed, noticing my curious expression. I'm preparing some items for next weekend. We have a whodunit themed night on Saturday and I'm finishing off many of the clues. I had a member of staff confused earlier, thought it was tonight of all times and started posting them in various rooms. Oh, you should have seen the fellow who found an axe buried in his four poster with a note saying, you're next. Anyway, uh, it was quite a kerfuffle. Uh, what can I do for you, Mr Davison? 